The Pebble in My Pocket, A History of Our Earth, by Meredith Hooper and Chris Cody. This reading is part two, beginning on page eight. The rain pours down, loosening the earth. Mud and rock slide off the mountainside into a river. The river rushes along, dragging silt, sand, gravel, boulders, stripping away the mountain surface, layer by layer. The river tumbles and rolls the rock, chipping edges, smoothing corners, rubbing in against other rocks. Gradually, the rock becomes rounder, smaller. The river widens, flowing brown and slow. The current nudges the rock past forests of ferns where spiders hide. It eases the rock through swamps where fish haul themselves out of the water and breathe the air. The rock travels for thousands and thousands of years. When it reaches the sea, it is a smooth, round, brown pebble. It is 375 million years ago. Boulders and rocks embedded deep in the soil of the mountain look like permanent residents. They aren't. They are just passing through, like everything else, all on the way to the bottom of the sea. The river drops the pebble onto a beach filled with other pebbles. The waves of the sea wash them backwards and forwards, grinding them up and grinding them down, rattling and clinking the pebbles together. Stripy pebbles, spotted pebbles, gray, brown, and white pebbles. Each pebble has come from its own special rock. Each was made in its own time and place. Shiny grains of sand settle between the pebbles. The sand fills the spaces like the mixture between pieces of fruit in a pudding. Slowly, the sea starts to flood the land. The sea covers the pebbles packed in their grains of sand. Gradually, the sand hardens, forming a new layer of rock, a conglomerate pudding stone rock. The sea covers the cliffs and drowns the mouth of the river and washes into the forest. It is 340 million years ago. Creatures swarm and slither in the warm sea. The tiny bodies of dead sea creatures drift down onto the seabed, layer upon layer. Fine mud drifts down and sand. As each layer presses down, the layers beneath slowly harden and the particles cement together to form more rocks, layers of sedimentary rock under the sea. The surface of the earth begins to rise, lifting the layers of rock to make new land above the water. Club moss trees crowd in dank swamps and giant amphibians hunt amongst rotting wood and buzzing insects. But the pebble is still buried deep under the ground beneath layers of sandstone and mudstone and limestone. It is 300 million years ago. The surface of the earth continues rising. It goes up one meter every 2,000 years. The layers of sandstone and limestone, mudstone and conglomerate, which were once under the sea, are pushed up and up. They tilt and fold and crack. In 10 million years, they have risen 5,000 meters, and now there are seashells and the fossils of dead sea creatures on top of mountains. Dry winds blow sand from distant deserts. The layers of rock wear away, as they always do, and in some places the rock with the pebbles stuck in it begins to show through. It starts splitting and breaking into slabs. A slab tumbles down a cliff. A reptile with leathery wings and a long, thin tail glides on the slab. A dinosaur with legs as big as tree trunks treads on the slab and cracks a lump off. It is 155 million years ago. At night, small mammals scuttle across the lump of rock while the dinosaurs sleep.
In the day, they crouch under the rock while the dinosaurs hunt. Gradually, the mixture holding the pebbles together crumbles into grains of sand. The pebble is released. It is 67 million years ago. A meat-eating dinosaur attacks a plant-eating dinosaur. In the fight, the pebble skids into a river. The pebble settles onto a sandbar with dinosaur bones and driftwood, drowned moss and flowers, because now there are flowers in this land. It is 65 million years ago.